All right, Hank Tan, we're going to talk about ways now. Cool. No, I can't be cool. I wish I was, and it's one of my regrets about life. I can't surf for the life of me, and I even go to those um, stores that have the artificial surfing machines and wish that I could go in there and try to learn how to surf. Because I live in Florida, we don't have a lot of waves. We're actually going to learn about why we don't have a lot of waves in Florida. Uh, but the um, I always wish that I would learn how to surf. And I think I, I love this topic because it's phenomenal. It always am, it amazes me that the, about the waves and why some oceans, that, some beaches have waves, some don't. And also, uh, I never realized until late into my adult, adulthood, well, I'm not that late into my adulthood yet, but late into my life recently, that the, these ocean waters actually form, uh, the, the waves are not a, something that happens in the beach. A lot of people think of waves as a beach thing. It's not a beach thing at all. It actually forms into the open ocean as well. So... Uh, waves actually come from the open ocean and it just happened to break when they need the beach. And let's talk about these waves and what causes them and the amazing things that they do to the ocean, to the surface of the continents and recycling of the geosphere material. Let's talk about that. Now, before we can actually do waves, let's do a little revision about the parts of a wave. Now, what you have here is a representation of a sine wave, which is a math uh, equation generator wave. And it's the way that surface waves in the ocean actually look like. Uh, remember that a wavelength is the distance between two crests or two troughs or any two e equal points in a wave. The trough is the bottom, the crest is the top. The amplitude is the distance between the bottom and the top. And the wavelength, again, is the difference between either crest or trough or any other two points in the surface of the water. Now, if the water wasn't disturbed, it would stay flat like this. But because of the wave, it moves up and down into the mo in, into a, in a motion that seems to be moving up and down. But we're going to learn that the water is actually moving in a circular motion, and that's what waves are all about. Now, in terms of ocean waves, when you hear something like wavelength, you're talking about the size of the wave, or or like the distance between when one wave hits and then the other one hits. But if you were to time that amount, you talk about wave period or the frequency of these of these waves. And then the amplitude is usually a manifestation of the intensity of the wave. So larger waves are usually equate to to a more Amplitude and they typically have shorter wavelengths and, uh, uh, and smaller frequencies. All right. Now, wave motion. When you think of waves, you think of the water moving up and down and up and down and up and down. If you're out in the open ocean near the beach, it seems like they're moving back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So, how is the water moving? Is it moving up and down or is it moving back and forth? Well. Put it all together and it kind of, you kind of get the way the water moves. Uh, waves are circular motions in the water. And it basically progresses because one molecule of water, let's say you follow this molecule of water right here, gets bumped and moves into a circular motion. And then as it does so, it bumps the next one, which bumps the next one, which bumps the next one, and so forth. And you get this progressive wave circular motion against the beginning of the water. Now, by the time you get, as you go deeper and deeper, and you can see in all of these drawings, the water will get, will circulate less and less and progress less and less, all right? And then you will basically get to a point where you won't feel the water. Now, if you're a fish right here, you will definitely feel the water moving in a wave motion. You will feel like, uh, and you actually might even move with the water in that circular pattern. But if you're down here beyond about half of a wavelength of depth, uh, and definitely below a 1.5 times the wavelength in depth. So uh, if you're talking about 1.5 times below the wavelength in depth, you are no longer going to feel the wave motion. So that means the bottom of the ocean is not affected by wave motion. All right? Now, um, just to clarify, people use frequency and period interchangeably. But frequency is actually defined as the number of waves passing uh, a certain point uh, for each each second, while the period is actually the time it's required for the crest uh, uh, to, to, to reach a certain point. So they're very similar definitions, but not exactly the same thing. All right? So frequency, you're talking about the number of waves that hit. hit. Period is actually the amount of time it takes uh, between two consecutive waves to hit. And so that's two slightly different concepts, both measuring the, the average motion of the wave. Remember, the higher the frequency, the faster these molecules are moving in circles. And that's all there is to it. 
You know, so the, if the wave is moving very fast, the frequency is very high, these this molecules are moving in circles extremely, extremely fast. All right? And this is how waves basically move. Now, um, you have to understand that the wave is actually transferring mechanical energy in a, in, in a progressive fashion, but that the water molecules themselves are not actually moving. Even though the energy of the wave is propagating in this direction, uh, the water molecules are actually circulating and end up right back where they started. So that if you were to leave something in a wave and there were no currents to speak of, that would just move up and down and side to side, but it would never actually leave that position. So if there was no currents, uh, something floating in the water would essentially float in the same spot. And I show a demonstration about that in class so you can see it, what I'm talking about. Now remember that the, the wave height uh, will depend on the circulation. And t uh, the, the height of the wave, this actual circle that the wave does, it actually uh, depends on the circulation. The amplitude of the wave or the wave height matches the, the distance that the water molecules are circulating. So each, each the actual uh, amplitude of the wave corresponds to the, how much the water is actually moving in that scenario, which means the wave that's traveling down here, where the circular motion is smaller, has less energy, and therefore the lower amplitude than the wave that's up there. And it might even travel slower as well because of that, which is one of the reasons why waves break, because the top moves faster than the bottom does. And so that you create this wave motion pattern, uh, which also means that the waves push the top water faster than the bottom water does. And so the waves have this propagating thing, which actually creates a current because of the differential between the top wave and the bottom wave. The bottom moves a lot less than the top does, creating an actual current. But if it w but So there is some lateral movement of water because of the difference between the way the top and the bottom move. But technically, each water particle moves in a circle. And if it wasn't for the current that's generated by the wave, it would stay where it is. But since the waves have differentials in, in depthness, it actually ends up creating this current because the top moves faster than the bottom does. So the, it seems like the, the top is moving faster and moving forward and creating a current. All right? Now, what makes the wave be smaller or bigger? As you can see in the picture up here on the right side, waves are created by the wind. So it is waves are created by the wind. In the beginning, you have a smooth water surface, but as the wind blows faster and faster, you start with these capillary waves with, which gather up and eventually become large, large waves. And, and these waves will propagate until the, the motion actually weakens or disperses over time uh, if the wind stops. So way beyond the wind, the waves will continue to propagate. But the area where the wind actually flows is where the waves is actually created. All right? And you can basically do the same by blowing the surface of the water. Remember, we're doing that. So you see here that waves are actually created by the wind, and there's a lot of, uh, of, of models to explain how waves are actually generated. And you can see that some people consider uh, uh, um, the, a mixed model in which it, we, basically trying to understand how the motion actually propagates, how the energy gets translated from the air into the wave, how each particle gets moved and bumped and so forth is actually not as simple as you think because a lot uh, of these waves remember if this particle was bumped this and this particle was bumped and this particle was bumped and this particle was bumped all at the same time you actually have multiple circles all being added together which is overall creating the motion of the waves so that's a lot more complicated to understand how the waves actually form than anything else and also remember that if you have two different waves combining they actually might erase each other so you see that in the in the middle here, that if the if the waves if the wave from one side collides with the wave from another side and they're not synced, one will actually erase the other. Because imagine if one is rising at the same time that one is sinking, they will actually delete each other's additive effects. So this one moving up over here uh, will fit in the one moving down over here, and you end up with a flat wave. But if you have two waves which match combining with each other, you're actually going to end up getting a bigger wave. And if you have one big wave and then smaller waves uh, or waves with lower frequency joining, you get a, this discontinuous setup or a mixed wave. And so out there in the ocean where waves are all mixed in with each other, it gets a lot more complicated than you think to actually generate the wave through the wind. But remember that wind is basically what does create the wave. Now, 
How fast the waves get depend on three major factors. It will depend on, this, it depend on the speed of the wind. In other words, how intense the wind is. So during a hurricane or a, a, a storm, winds will be more, more uh, waves will be bigger, and a surge will actually, remember the storm surge? It actually causes because of that high intense wind speed. In addition to that, it would also matter how long the wind lasts. If you have a gust of wind, you're just basically going to create a swell or one continuous motion of water into the, that, like a pulse. But if you have a continuous wind blowing, you're going to get, create additive effects when the waves are going to combine with each other and create bigger and bigger waves the way you see here. It will start with something like micro ripples and the ripples will eventually become starting to catch more and more of the wind and eventually you get uh, chops and then the chops get so big that they actually develop into fully developed waves which eventually hit the ocean uh, surf, uh, shoreline and collapse to form breakers. So one thing that's interesting about this is that as you see in this drawing as the wind gets higher or as the wave gets bigger it can actually catch more wind and so it's like a it's like a, a, a sail in a boat the bigger the wave gets the easier it is for us to actually catch the wind so as the wave grows in size it actually can become even larger it become better at catching the wind however as it grows it also gets heavier and eventually collapses under its own weight so there's a limit to how big waves can get even on the open water where there's a lot of water underneath to support the weight of the wave because eventually waves get too big and end up collapsing even on the uh, even on the open water another important concept is the idea of the fetch the fetch is, a, is the area where the wind is blowing so for example out here you might not have wind anymore so beyond here you might not have wind anymore in this area here but it still have a wave because the wind blew enough to create the wave Fetch is the area where the wind is acting. In other words, the area that's exposed to the wind. And as long as the waves are in a fetch, they actually create more waves. All right? So that's kind of how it happens.